All right, we have an Arduino Uno down here. Everybody recognizes that. This chip here is an 8-bit GPIO expander that's used on the I2C bus. It is a PCF8574. The PCF8574P is a very cheap, inexpensive, and easy in to use integrated circuit that when connected to an I2C bus provides eight I.O. pins. To properly use this device, you're going to have to understand how it works. It has no data direction register and it has one address for read or write for the most part. So we're going to be exploring that you're looking at a copy one of them right here it is a 16 pin dip has plus five a ground three address pins an interrupt pin serial data serial clock and eight io pins labeled p0 through p7 the first issue is device addressing the spec sheet is really confusing on this and it also depends on what device you connect it to in this case as i as i told you you had three address pins a0 through a2 bss is ground so if you ground all three your address is 20 hexadecimal but if you're going and this is what you would use for arduino or uh, Raspberry Pi. If you're going to use this with a pickaxe, you have to left shift one bit and you're going to end up with 0x40. So keep that in mind. There's one other small issue we need to look at. Uh, by the way, if you're just using, and this is again the PCF8574P is the same thing as the PCF 8574. The PCF 8574 AP, remember AP on the end, has a completely different address, address locations. Again, to reiterate by using the address addressing scheme as you see here, you can connect eight devices to a single I2C bus with eight I.O. pins per device, that is 64 individual I.O. pins connected to a single pickaxe, Raspberry Pi, or Arduino. Now, let's look at uh, something else. And this is off the spec sheet. This is the addressing of the PCF8574A which starts at 38 hex through 3 F hex, a decimal, 38 hex through 3 F hex. Thus, you could take eight of these and eight of these with the proper address selection and have 16 8-bit I.O. devices for 100, I think 128 individual I.O. pins off of a single I2C bus. So that's what you have to be wary of with the addressing. The addressing for the 8574A is not the same as the 8574 or the 8574P. Keep that in mind or you will have a lot of confusion. All right, here's a photo um, that will be presented in more detail in a follow another video of a PCF 8574. It's connected to an Arduino or it could be connected to this pickaxe, whichever way I throw the jumpers. I have four switches connected to P0 through P3 and four LEDs connect it from P4 to P7. 
In a later video, we're going to discuss using the Raspberry Pi along with the Arduino and the pickaxe. The pick we have eight switches connected to one device, and we have eight LEDs connected to another device, and we will discuss how to read and write these chips for all three, pickaxe, Arduino, or Raspberry Pi. Understanding the I.O. hardware is vital to being able to program this device. This, this is not like a regular I.O. pin. Basically, here's the block diagram from the spec sheet. The 8574 and the 8574A are identical on internal cons construction, but differ on I2C addressing. Of course, you have a clock, serial clock, serial data, plus five. These things actually run from three to five volts. There's ground, three address pins, and interrupt coming out. Note that this is an interrupt on change. If the level on any of these pins um, changes, you will get an interrupt. You have your bus control, a... a um, Serial, essentially a serial to parallel shift register. You have your interrupt logic and so forth. Let's look a little deeper. Here is a look at a individual I.O. pin. Notice something quite important here. This thing will switch to ground. We call it syncing the current. So if you have an LED, connect it to P0 through P7 through a resistor up to VDD and you write a zero, this MOSFET down here will turn on, it'll sync the current to ground and the LED will light up. Now this is where it's going to really be funny. If I take an LED through a resistor and connect it to ground, it will not light up or will be so dim you can barely see it. This does not have a high output. If I write a, a 1 to the appropriate bit, I'm turning on a pull-up. This is not an actual I.O. pin, or it's not going to connect you to uh, VCC or VDD like it does in a standard I.O. pin. Let's compare. Here is the I.O. pin configuration. In this case, it's a pickaxe, but it's common in most of them. This is a tri-state I.O. Here's your P-channel MOSFET. Here's your N-channel. If I have a low, if I want a low out, I switch on the N-channel. If I want a high out, I'm going to switch on the P-channel. If I turn both of them off, it will be tri-stated and high impedance. And when it's high impedance, I can use it as an input pin. You cannot do that with this. Get that out of your mind right now. You can switch it low to ground, but a high will only produce a pull-up output. If you're going to drive an LED, you're going to have to use a driver transistor or a transistor array or something. You cannot drive an LED connected to a resistor to ground. A little closer look at this problem is here. Okay, here's your low output, there's your pin. It does have something called accelerator. When you first switch it, it'll give an extra boost of current to bring it up, but then it switches off, and all you have is this weak 100 microamp current source which, by the way, when you put a low output, is turned off. It's not left on all the time. It'll turn off when you put a low output. This will switch to ground and so forth. This determines how your LEDs and switches are going to be connected. All right, here are your connections for eight LEDs. I also stuck one in the interrupt that you'll be seeing in the videos. Uh, you have your serial data and serial clock and your interrupt. I pulled the serial data and serial clock up to 5 volts through some 4.7K resistors. These five resistors connected to the LEDs are all 1K. 
these four resistors are all 1k I ground it all three address inputs to give me an address of 0x20 in hexadecimal note how the, and you notice that the LEDs through the appropriate resistors are tied high the only way to, to turn on an LED is you have to switch the appropriate bit low or zero. All right, one quick thing to understand, if, like I said again, if you want to turn on these LEDs, and we call this sinking the current, write a zero through the appropriate bit. All right, here are eight switches connect it from each I.O. pin directly to ground. That's all you need to do to uh, connect a switch because if you write a high to it, it automatically cuts on uh, the pull up and when you press a switch that pull up will go low. What happens is you will write 0xff to this and you will pull all of the pull ups high if you press any switch, this interrupt pin will go low. In the demonstrations I'm using, and I'm using I'm using GPIO 20 on the Raspberry Pi, or you can use a uh, digital pin 2 on an Arduino. Nonetheless, this is you can't get much easier to connect switches than this. Just a switch straight to ground. You can't blow it up because the only thing it comes out is the 100 microamps. In the case of the switch assembly, which is takes up one complete PCF8574, I connected A0 to high. This give, gives me an address of 0x21. All right, here's the actual connections for the demo using the pickaxe and the Arduino. In this case, I have connected four switches to ground from P0 through P3, and I've connected four LEDs in the current sync configuration on P4 through P7. Here is my interrupt pin, if we move on up here. In this case, you just have to connect, in the case of an Arduino, you have to connect in your serial clock and serial data. The uh, two lines are pulled high through some 4.7K resistors. The interrupt, in the case of the pickaxe, goes to pin C.3. Or if you're using an Arduino, you're going to use digital pin 2. The LED that you see here is simply an indicator for uh, the pickaxe that the program is cycling through and working. Uh, you can use digital pin 13's LED on Arduino to do the same thing. This is a pickaxe zero, pickaxe zero eight M2. Easy to program. I'll briefly show you the program on that and compare it to the Arduino. All right, that completes this brief introduction. The next two videos are going to be using just the Arduino. In one of them, we're going to be just counting, and the other one is going to be detecting switches and writing the appropriate switch closure to the appropriate LED. So we can have a look at the code, and it'll include some videos of it actually working. So please press the like button and catch the rest of the videos in this series. Thank you for viewing this video.